If you want to compost a whole bunch of organic waste without having to turn that pile, then this might be your answer. Let's get into it. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm Diego and this is the double ring composter or the Diego footer device for people who can't compost good. And yes, that is a Zoolander reference if you haven't seen the last two videos, which went into the engineering of this composting system. So you may say, well, that kind of looks like a bioreactor, that kind of looks like a leaf mold composter, and you're right on both accounts. It's an iteration on both. It's kind of blending the two together. What we have here is a large outer ring, six feet in diameter. In the very center, we have a two foot inner ring. The idea here is to create a lot of airflow. The chicken wire inside of this concrete mesh allows air to flow through into the outside of the pile. The same thing is happening on the inner tube, so you get a nice air exchange from both the inside of the pile and the outside of the pile. At no point is any part of the pile ever going anaerobic because air is coming in from the outside and air is coming in from the inside, encouraging aerobic conditions without you having to do it by turning the pile. This is different than a traditional Johnson Sioux bioreactor because we don't have landscape fabric on the outside. We don't have all the white tubes in the middle providing aeration. And it's different than a traditional leaf mold composter because that doesn't employ the center ring. The center ring again is there to provide airflow. One thing people have asked when looking at this design is they say, wow, there's a lot of surface of that pile exposed to the air. It's going to want to dry out and I really haven't had that experience. It's the middle of winter here in Southern California. We've had 75 degree days a lot. It's been rather dry and this pile seems to be maintaining a good moisture level. Now, why is that? Well, I am irrigating the pile. I'm providing water to the pile probably once or twice a week. And then what you're seeing is kind of that sponge effect. You apply water in one area and it follows the gradient, wet to dry. So if I add a lot of water to the center of the pile, it gradually wicks its way to the outside of the pile. So even if you are getting a lot of evaporation on the outside of the pile, there's still a lot of water reserve in the center of the pile that is pulling to the outside so we never get it fully dried out and there are mushrooms on the surface growing right now right at the very edge of the pile which says hey the edge of the pile is actually pretty wet one other thing people have asked is can it actually get hot with all that ventilation a lot of people want their piles to get hot burn up weed seeds burn up pathogens maybe to meet organic standards and the answer is absolutely yes i built this pile initially on december 15th i filled it to the tippy top one week later it had settled down to about current levels i filled it again to the top and it has now over two months settled back down to current levels i saw it get up to about 140 145 degrees with the horse manure in there full steam in the morning it was looking sexy how do you get the material out at the end of the day? It's very simple. The part that we closed up, we simply open it up and now we have access to the pile. It's not all gonna spill out like sand. It's more gonna sit there like a jelly mold or a bunt cake and you can just kind of scoop off what you need. And I did build this on a bed anyway, so if it spills, who cares? For somebody who tells you they have the perfect composting method that creates the ultimate compost, well, frankly, they're just a charlatan and they're not God. They can't create the ultimate compost. They can't dictate the biology in the pile. And really, frankly, they're full of more dung than this ring composter right here. If you have that attitude, you're kind of missing the point. The whole idea of composting is to keep material out of the waste stream, to add organic matter to the soil, and to stimulate microbial activity or multiply out microbial activity. I think any composting system that can check those three boxes is a great composting system. So maybe it isn't perfect on the checklist of whatever perfect compost looks like, but it's going to be good enough. And I think this is going to make good enough compost. So at the end of the day, just start composting, whether it's with a traditional compost pile or a double ring composter like this, get the organic matter in there, get the microbes going and put that organic matter in the soil so you can grow lots of great things. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.